Do you feel stuck in your job? Not sure what the next steps are? Or does the idea of meeting up with the big boss give you chills, stress you out, or cause you anxiety? If so, you're not alone. The great news. By subscribing to this show, you've taken the first step to getting help and making progress. Stay tuned for episode 169 of the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. Today's show title, Every Day is an Interview. I was an engineer and in 2008 lost my job due to the economic collapse. Jobs were scarce. I didn't know where to turn to get help updating my resume. Online services and coaches charge hundreds, even thousands of dollars. I took matters into my own hands and learned how to craft interview-winning resumes. Shortly later, I landed a job with a Fortune 500 company. I have helped many achieve similar success. Now I share my tips to create interview-winning resumes, interviewing excellence, and high-performance growth strategies on my podcast, Career Growth Made Easy. Hey there, I'm Craig Ansell, your host of the Career Growth Made Easy podcast, and we are rocking it with episode 169, Every Day is an Interview. You know, in the intro, I might have piqued your curiosity, and I hope you stuck around for the show, because Every Day is an Interview can be confusing. It might have made you wonder, hmm, does that make you envision a calendar with the word interview on every day of the week? Not only five, but seven days a week? Well, that's kind of the concept of today's show, and we're going to talk about that more. I asked you in the intro, do you feel stuck in your job? Maybe you're unsure of what the next steps are for your work, for your career. Do you get the feeling of when you're thinking about making up, you know, meeting up with a big boss, do you get chills, stressed out, cause you anxiety or nervousness? You are not alone. I have heard from many that that is the case. But I also mentioned the great news by subscribing to the Career Growth Made Easy podcast, you've taken the first step in getting help to make progress. So let's get into the content now. I don't know about you, but even as a coach, when I think about interviews, I cringe, even if it's just a little. I think about all the work that's involved that goes into applying for a job getting a job application together. Then there's my resume. Eek, for many of us, where is it? Do I have one? If I think I have one, when's the last time I updated it? Oh, and that starts to get you nervous, right? Little anxiety, little fear, stress. And then the formal process of interviewing. Oh, wow. Will it be one-on-one? Group interviews? How many interviews will there be? Okay, let's stop right there. Slow down, Craig. That's enough to stop most of us in our tracks, to freeze us like a deer in the headlights, and stop us from making any attempts going forward. Here's the deal, though. We're not talking about all that now. Phew, that's off my chest, and hopefully yours too. Take a deep breath. Let's talk about the real focus, and it's also the title of today's show. Every day is an interview. But what exactly does that mean? We are going to explore that in detail. In our daily lives, we have our work. Within our work, we have our tasks, responsibilities, things that we have to accomplish, whether it's hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever your reporting period is. There's the perception of how you're doing your job, and then there is the reality. However, When you are looked at for how you perform in your daily work life, all forms of communication are on the table. There's email, there's speaking by phone in meetings, there's attention to detail, your awareness, and of all else, perception, because many people have said perception can become reality. What's that all about, Craig? I'm still confused here. You're going to get to it or what? All right, here's the deal. Every day is an interview. It may not be a formal interview, but it's about how you act and react to everything going on in your daily lives. 
Does that make sense? Even if your peers are working with you, they're processing how you're behaving, how you're acting, how much work you're getting done, what you do, what you say, along with how you do it, right? Many companies today with performance reviews are not just looking at what you accomplish, but they're looking at how you accomplish it. Here's an example. You can have two people that are both very good at their jobs. So in the what category, what they get done, they get a four or a five out of five, a really high rating, darn near perfect, right? A four, four and a half or five out of five. That's great. So you really can't separate them apart. But then you look at the how you achieve things, right? How is it done? Is it done with respect, tact, confidence? Well, that's where the how ratings differ for these two people. One person could be very aggressive and just rude, directing, almost demanding. And the other person, assertive, which is, again, slightly different from aggressive. They are driven they know how to get things done. They communicate well, effectively, respectively, and they're not so driven that they're aggressive, demanding, maybe even argumentative or ordering, commanding. So for one person that's aggressive, your how might be a two, maybe a three, either three being average or two below average, indicating you might need uh, help on your techniques, get some training, some coaching. The other person that's assertive, simply means they're driven. But the way they communicate with others is respectful, it's calm, it's engaging. People might even say if you asked their peers, I prefer working with the second person because of these things. They respect me, they appreciate me. That how characteristic might be getting you a four, four and a half, or even a five. So I brought that up for a reason because I've worked with a number of companies. Some of them either do use or had used the what and the how process when doing their annual reviews for performance. And typically, salary or pay increases were tied to those. So you can have two people that both perform on the what category, getting it done, but the how is very unique. I mention that because with today's show, titled Every Day is an Interview, it's not only about what you do, your achievements, your accomplishments, but it's about how you do them. You're always being observed whether you like it or not and whether you recognize it or not. In some job areas, you'll be observed less in others more. But also, if it were to come time for pay raises, performance reviews, or even opportunities for advancement, such as a promotion, someone's leaving the company or retiring, or quit unexpectedly, and that role needs to be fulfilled, many times companies will look within. They do that for a number of reasons. One reason would be to save on external costs of hiring people to advertise for them, recruiters, etc. The other is that if you've been working at the, in your job for some time with this company, you already have been vetted. You've already been through the process of the formal interviewing, the resume, the job application, possibly background checks, etc. And you're qualified to be where you are and capable. If you've done this for a long period of time or a longer period of time, you're gaining valuable experience. In all reality, you should be improving your knowledge and improving your skill set day by day. With that said, if someone were to come and look for someone internally to promote, to, to suggest or recommend for a leadership or management role due to attrition, right? Retirement, somebody quit, or job shuffling, some positions opened. Would you be one of those candidates considered? If you were, what would your peers say about you? Now, I'm not talking about backstabbing and gossip and things like that. It, the show really is meant to get you thinking, how do you act, as I said in the beginning, and how do you react to situations at work? Are you calm, cool, and collected? Or is, do you have the appearance more of being uh, frustrated, your hair on fire, and just always running about and being erratic and you know disorganized? Some jobs are more difficult than others, certainly. Some jobs have greater you know, divisions of responsibility in other jobs. 
Not so much. But if you ever had the interest in moving up within a company to a team leader role, supervisor, manager, whatever the next step would be for you, you should be seen as qualified for that role. In many cases, people are promoted because they're seen going above and beyond their existing role and being in control of their environment and being in control with their team members. Communication, as I mentioned, there's so many methods of communication, but anytime you're sharing information, you're communicating. That not only verbally, phones, emails, texts, uh, team meeting, virtual meetings, but body language as well. What is your body language like? Does your body language mirror and align with the way you're communicating and feeling? Or is it disruptive? Is it disconnected? Do you say things, but yet your body shows that you're stressed or tense? Are you known for, you know, I don't know, physically pounding a table or slamming your fist down when you're upset or slapping the table? I mentioned that last part because I had an old manager many, many years ago that would rule by an iron fist. And what I mean by that is when he didn't get what he wanted or didn't feel that people were listening to him in our management meetings, he would slam his fist down loud on the table and disrupt every conversation going on so that he would become the focus. We didn't appreciate that. It certainly got our attention, but it made us feel as if he wasn't interested in our individual viewpoints and our donations, but he simply wanted to push his through as the ruler of the meeting. I guess, I guess for that story, just think about the way you act. Think about the way that your body shows mannerisms. Are you confident when you walk about? When you present in meetings, whether again in person or virtually, what is your style? How organized are you? There's so many things to cover, but the, the goal for today's, inter today's interview, yes, today is an interview also. Every day is an interview is the title of the show. And the goal is just to make you aware, envision a calendar or every morning you wake up and your phone says, good morning, time to wake up. And it says, today is an interview. And it repeats itself over and over and over. Okay. It's Groundhog Day. You're making the point, Craig. We are being observed all the time, and it's not for spy purposes. It's not to make you feel uncomfortable. No one is perfect, least of all me. But if we can remember that we want to try to perform to our utmost, to our best, honor, integrity, respect, these are all words that come to mind for me and possibly would align with you as well. Think about how you would like to be treated, which is the golden rule. The way you would like to be treated treat others that way. That is the golden rule for today. And with that said, treating people with respect, with using your organizational skills, communicating effectively, clearly, will ultimately help you when that chance comes for a promotion, a new position being opened for advancement, whether you're noticed and asked to submit a resume or submit your application or you're interested in a position coming up open. More than likely, peers of yours or your, your back work history will be reviewed, even if it's through your supervisor or manager. And you need to wonder, what will they say about me? If every day was an interview, how did I perform? Because this is the big interview coming up for the big job, and I'm really excited. So set things in motion now if you've not been on the right path given today's show, and you'd like to change things around, set things in motion today for a positive tomorrow so that your future interviews will go off without a hitch and be better. And hey, you know what? In I did mention earlier, no one's perfect. If you make a mistake after listening to this show and wish you could undo something, you can't. But if the matter is serious enough and you feel you need to apologize or you need to address it, you might consider it because apologies are not always a sign of weakness. They can be a sign of strength that a mistake was made and that you want to improve the situation and learn from it. I hope today's show, Every Day as an Interview, got you thinking, made you curious, and you agree with some of the viewpoints I've shared, because, like it or not, we're always being watched. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you for being a valuable subscriber to Career Growth Made Easy. I look forward to sharing more information with you next week. I'm Craig Ansell, your host. Bye-bye.
Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel. New episodes every Monday. In the meantime, why don't you follow us on social media, at Craig Ansell on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. To book a coaching appointment, download our free guides, or join our email list, check out the links in the description below.